How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, non-contact voltage testers are a must if you're taking on electrical projects around the house, but which one is best? Which brand is the best and which model is the best? We have nine different voltage testers here that we're gonna put through the paces, both testing out on Romex, detection of voltage and Romex, detection at GFCI outlets and standard outlets, in addition to actually running through a durability test. What happens if you drop these on the ground, which is completely reasonable on a job site, are they still gonna perform? And I will say, I was surprised by the durability results. Over half of these non-contact voltage testers do not make it through. Remember, right below the video in the description, you'll see links for each and every one we're testing. So let's jump into it. So just confirming, we do have voltage control here, but we can confirm at the GFCI that we're at 120 to 121 volts AC to kick off our testing. And then first up, we'll be using the Klein Tools 1P voltage tester. The 1P has a sensitivity range from 50 to 1000 volts. And with a momentary press of the power button, you'll get audible and a green LED indicating it's on. And then once it detects voltage, you'll get audible alarm and a red LED. But this model does not have an integrated light. Now for the testing, what we're gonna do, and this is the test for the 1P, but it will do the same thing with all the different non-contact voltage testers. We'll take this piece of Romex, which has 120 volts active on it right now. We'll measure to the side here, so we get the audible alarm, but we'll also measure to the middle, no audible alarm. So the second test is measuring to the middle to see if it's still picking it up. Then we'll go into the hot side, that's the small slot here of the GFCI, and we're not picking anything up in the hot side. And then we'll go to the normal duplex outlet, and we do pick it up. So for those four tests, the 1P failed two of those tests. It failed the GFCI and it failed the middle test here in the Romex. Let me show you closer on the Romex over here why we're testing those two locations. So we're testing the two locations because on the orientation of that Romex, we have hot here on the one side, but then we just have the bare ground in the middle. So it's showing us how sensitive are these units. You'd want a unit that can pick up from a little distance away so you don't get a false negative thinking you do not have power, but it was just you tested to the neutral side or the ground side of your Roma. And then the only other test we'll do, and we'll fill out our full table with all the results of all nine voltage testers, is I will adjust the voltage and test at this duplex the same test. There's 120 volts running through here now, but I'll lower this to 80 volts and see if we're still getting the hot detection from each of the voltage testers. The Klein Tools 3P has two sensitivity range from 12 to 1000 volts or 70 to 1000 volts. I've been carrying this daily for a couple of years now. When you do a momentary press, you get audible alarm and green LED. It does have an integrated light in it. And here's what you get when voltage is detected. And then testing out the 3P will be in 70 to 1000 range and it does have an audible alarm. Testing the side, we're good and it's picking up testing to the center and actually testing way out, it is picking up as well. So passing both of those, now going into GFCI, also passes that and duplex. So all four passes with the 3P. The Klein Tools 4 IR is one of the largest tested with a momentary press, you'll get a blue LED and audible alarm. And in addition, you do have a temperature IR sensor which will give you the temperature right on the LCD screen. When it detects voltage, here's what you get for an output. It's a two level audible alarm. Easily detecting the first one. And in the center, you can see it has actually quite the range where it starts picking that up. So first and second test passed, picking up on our GFCI on the hot side and also for the duplex outlet, and it has those two levels of audible alarm. The Southwire 4012N has two different voltage range, 24 to 600 volts and 100 to 600 volts. It also has an integrated light at the end. And once you do a momentary press, you get a green LED with audible alarm. And here's what it sounds like when it detects voltage. And for the Southwire, first test good, second test good. GFCI, no, duplex, good. Ideal 61-627 has a voltage range from 50 to 1000. With a momentary press, you get a green LED and audible alarm. And here's what it sounds like when it detects voltage. It has a two level audible alarm. 
test one starts picking up a distance away from the Romex. Test two passed, GFCI passed, and duplex passed. The Fluke 1AC-A2 has a voltage sensitivity range from 90 to 1000 volts. With a momentary press, you'll get audible alarm and a double flash of the red LED, and here's what it sounds like when it detects voltage. Test one passed. Test two passed. Doesn't really fit in to the GFCI, so that's a fail. And duplex fast. The Fluke LVD2 has a voltage range from 90 to 600. Momentary press of the on off switch and you'll get a quick flash of the blue LED and then the integrated light will continue to stay on. And here's what it looks like when it detects voltage with a magenta LED showing up and no audible alarm. The Kiwi's HT100S has a sensitivity range from 12 to 1000 volt. And with a press and hold, you'll get the LCD screen to light up, which has a display in percent of the voltage it's detecting, the range that's active. And it does also have an integrated LED. You just press and hold and it'll turn on. And this is what it sounds like and looks like when it detects voltage. We'll kind of zoom in on the display so you can see it for the first test. It gives you kind of a percent level for the detection. Second one, not picking anything up, so a fail on the second one. Third on the GFCI, nothing. Ooh, little failure there. So the cap actually came off and just exposed the indicator. So that's less than ideal. And the duplex picks it up, so a pass on the duplex. The Greenlee TR13 has a sensitivity range from 50 to 1000 volts and a unique design with two different probes, most likely for tamper resistant outlets to make sure that you can actually get the hot side, which is this side, into the outlet. Here's what it sounds like when it turns on, you get a flashing LED and then you also do have an integrated LED. And here's what it sounds like when it detects voltage. So test one, it picks up. Test two, it's picking up. You need to make sure you're in the right side for the hot side. GFCI picks up and duplex. Also a pass. So we have all the results and that is including also testing at the duplex outlet, turning that down to 80 volts. So those are all gonna be in a table, including pricing and also this durability test. What the durability test will be is I'm gonna drop the non-contact voltage tester straight on the ground like this and they're going to hit actually the testing portion. We're gonna do that 25 times with each one of those, and then I'm gonna go back in and test at the duplex outlet at 120 volts. This will be done at tool belt height, so I'll just go off the hip here and just consistently drop at that height. Again, 25 times for each, we'll test it, and if a good number make it past 25, we'll go all the way up to 50 to see how they perform. So now we'll run through them after durability test. This is the Klein Tools 1P. It does turn on, but if you can shake the unit and then it turns off, you know you have some internals there that are not working correctly or shaken loose. So 1P is a fail from the durability test with 25 drops. 3P, this was my daily carry. We have a completely damaged sensor here. It's all tucked over and we are not turning on, so 3P, fail. 4IR, turns on, no audio, and not passing the shake test. So 4IR, all client tools failed. So Southwire, Southwire turns on. Southwire remains on and detects at the duplex. That is a complete success and a pass. Ideal. Ideal turns on, pass the shake test, and still detects that is a pass. The Fluke 1AC, turn on, no LED, nope. 
That is a fail. Fluke LVD2. Nope, not looking good. I had high hopes for this one, but nope, did not pass the durability. Kaiweets, not even close. Kaiweets, like completely self imploded. It's not even turning on. It had all sorts of things breaking loose on the inside. Complete failure. Greenly, little too much shake in there on the inside. Sounds like batteries are not set correctly. So that is a fail for the Greenly. So that was a lot of information. Let's bring it all together in one table. So here's all nine of the non-contact voltage testers that we went through and either a green pass or an X fail. In addition, some value for you is the prices. We went through and did lowest, highest, and average price across Amazon. And that's looking over multiple months. So you know, okay, current price, should I wait for Black Friday, Prime Day? Is there a lot better deal? overall. Now my daily carry 3P did fail. I have a lot of experience with, with that one and it has served me well, but that is not going to be my pick. I'm going to pick the best bang for the buck and then also which one am I going to be using going forward because my 3P failed. Fluke is an amazing brand. I've had amazing results with them over the years. I had a multimeter I used for over 10 years straight, never had any problems. But unfortunately, those two did not pass it for this one, especially on the durability standpoint. And the small LVD2, I really like that size. The size was great. And you can see here's a size comparison of all the different voltage testers side by side, but that one just failed too many different ones. Kiwi, I've seen these guys, I'm not even pronouncing that correctly, I'm sure but they didn't even come close. I would not touch that with a 10 foot pole. Greenly has some unique designs and has some potential, depending on what you're looking for, maybe you pick that. But my overall pick for the best bang for the buck is gonna be the Ideal. And right now, that link in the description, I saw Ideal was on a smoking deal on Amazon. That passed with flying colors across the board. The only thing and why I put it bang for the buck, a critical feature for me is the light, to have an integrated light because I use it all the time for projects and I just carry my non-contact voltage tester in my tool belt and that is my go-to light as well. So that's why it's bang for the buck, but not my daily carry. What I would pick for my daily carry is going to be the South Wire. I thought Southwire did amazing. I don't have a ton of experience with the brand. I was super impressed the way it picked up basically everything except for the GFCI, passed the durability with flying colors, and has the integrated light. But I wanna hear what you guys think. What do you carry? What do you have experience with? And also let me know if there's any other products that you want me to test in a similar fashion to this. Now, if you're ready to put tools like this to the test, check out this video right here. I'll show you how I moved an outlet behind this TV right here, pulling power from another outlet in the room. And I did no drywall work. I did no painting. I didn't go in the attic and I didn't go in the basement or crawl space. So there's a few different tricks that you can use to make that happen. And then I've been diving a lot more into solar lately. If you wanna to start to get your feet wet and try to understand what can a solar panel actually power, specifically a critical appliance like a refrigerator, check out this video right here and we'll walk through some test cases of how many panels you need to power your refrigerator. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next videos. Take care.